Number 52, integrated concepts. A 90 kilogram ice hockey player hits a 0.15 kilogram puck, giving the puck a velocity of 45 meters per second. If both are initially at rest and if the ice is frictionless, how far does the player recoil in the time it takes the puck to reach the goal 15 meters away? All right, so let's just draw in the goal over here and uh, let's assume that that is 15 meters away from the puck. All right, uh, so here's Gretzky. He's got the puck. He's going to shoot, and the puck is going to travel towards the goal, and the puck leaves his hockey stick at a velocity of 45 meters per second, and by uh, Gretzky imparting a momentum to the puck, the puck is imparting essentially momentum back, right, a force back on the player, um, and therefore we should expect Gretzky to uh, have a recoil velocity of some value, all right? So we're going to be dealing with conservation of momentum here. Uh, that being said, the momentum before the collision should equal the momentum right after the collision. Uh, since both items uh, told us were at rest, uh, that means there is zero momentum initially or before the collision. And then afterwards, we would have the momentum of the, uh, let's say, of Gretzky, plus then the momentum of the puck, okay? So expanding on this a little bit, um, we would have zero is equal to M1 V1A, right? Plus M2 V2A, okay? Meaning that the mass, I'm just using, you know, using this equation now, momentum is equal to mass multiplied by velocity. So the mass of the hockey player multiplied by the velocity of the hockey player after the collision, plus the mass of the puck multiplied by the velocity of the puck after the collision. Right, so basically we know all the values in this equation uh, except for this one, right? So what I'll do here is I'll solve uh, this equation for V1A, okay? So um, the best way to do that would probably, I mean, there's doesn't really matter how we do the algebra. Let's subtract, uh, you know, this term on over to the left and then we'll divide out M1, okay? So that should look something like now negative M2 V2A all over M1 should equal then V1A. Okay, I'll put a little box around it. So this represents the uh, velocity, the recoil velocity of Gretzky. And we expect it to go backwards, right to the left. And that's basically what the negative sign implies here. All right, uh, so that's great. So now let's, I mean, we can calculate that, but why don't we keep setting up some equations? And now uh, we wanna know though, we don't wanna know his recoil velocity. Right, we want to know how far he travels, right? So we want to know essentially the x he travels in a certain time, right? Well, in what time? Well, in the time it takes for the puck to go from his hockey stick and into the goal. So basically what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for this time, okay? Because this time will be the same as the time he, you know, the time that uh, we're being asked to solve for, uh, in order to determine his recoil distance, because they're asking us how far. So now how would we solve for time here? Well, think back to kinematics, right? We know a velocity, we know a distance, so we're looking for time, and how to, you know, how do, how do we find that? So I think we can write it's constant acceleration, it's not accelerating at all, so we can just use the simple, right, the velocity uh, formula. That velocity is equal to d over t. Right, and solving this for time, it would be t is equal to d over v. All right, so I should say, let me, this is distance to the goal divided by the velocity of the hockey puck, right, after the collision. Okay, so this is another beautiful equation. And now if I know the time, right, how can I now find the distance for uh, that Gretzky travels? Well, remember, we do know the uh, recoil velocity, that's what this told us. We just found the time, so now how do we find the distance? Again, it's constant acceleration, so it's gonna be basically the same setup, the same formula, right? V is equal to uh, D over T. Now in this time, right, this is, we're talking about Gretzky, and uh, in this one, we were talking about the velocity of the puck, right? After the collision, the distance between the puck and the goal, and the time it took. Uh, in this one now, we're looking at V1A, right, the velocity after Gretzky hits the puck, his recoil velocity, right, will be equal to the distance he's traveling, divided by then the time it took for the puck to get to the goal, 
okay? So uh, realizing that, you know, these two times are the same, what I'm going to do, well, first, actually, let me solve this for D, right? Because that's really what we're after. We're after the, I called it X over there, but, uh, you know, it's the horizontal component of the displacement. So I'm just leaving it in terms. D, D and X are the same. Okay. So t D is equal to V1A times T. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value and substitute it on in for, for this. Okay. And what do we realize? That D is essentially equal to V1A, right, multiplied by DG, right, the distance to the goal, divided by V2A. Now, what is V1A? Well, that's what the, that's what we found over here, right? So let's plug this now. Let's plug this on in for V1A. And then we'll have a complete equation now. So I'm going to do that right here in the middle, okay? So it's going to be the distance is going to be equal to uh, negative M2, V2A, all over M1, times then distance to the goal over V2A. So what's interesting, right? What do you, what do you notice? The V2As do what? They cancel, right? They go bye-bye. So this is the overall equation, negative M2, distance to the goal over M1. Very interesting, right? Basically distance multiplied by the fraction of the masses, okay? Or the ratio of the mass, I should say. So let's just plug it on in. So the distance here will be equal to negative M2, which was 0 0.150, times the distance to the goal, 15 meters, all divided by M1, which was 90 kilograms. And the distance then becomes, and it's negative because he's traveling to the left, right? So he's traveling in the negative x direction. So 0.15 times 15 divided by 90. And look at that, 0 0.025. So 0 0.025. And that's in terms of meters. All right. So that's the answer. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. And if this video helped you out at all, hit that like button too. That'd be awesome. All right. Appreciate it very much. And I will see you in the next problem. Have a great day.